You could save and have pizza. It works for it, me. It works for me too. Speaking of that, when you do have pizza, how often do you refrigerate it within two hours? According to our insiders, it isn't a universal habit. No. Two hours? Well, 17% said they left it out two to three hours. 21% say up to four hours. 18% say just you can leave it out overnight. Ooh. Another 16% said more than a day. Yeah, that's you can nasty. Stay. Is that getting bad for you? It's a little nasty. Well, is it safe to leave pizza out past the recommended, which is two hours? Hmm. Frank McGeorge and I are two people who could have pizza for pretty much every meal and be right. quite happy about it. So he has put it to the test, teaming up with a food safety researcher for some slice science, Doc. That is exactly right, Karen and Devin. You know, the USDA says after two hours, you should refrigerate uneaten pizza. But honestly, in my life of eating lots of pizza, I rarely put it away in time. And while some people just think that's gross, the real question is, is it safe? So I actually set out to find out using a simple experiment and the most popular pizza in the U.S., pepperoni. Three identical pepperoni pizzas. And that's what we started with on day one at Dr. Teresa Bergholz's food safety lab at Michigan State University. The question, is pepperoni pizza safe to eat if it's unrefrigerated beyond two hours? If there was something harmful in the pizza, it's likely to be organisms like Staph aureus, and that is what we'll be testing for today, along with general yeast and mold counts and total bacterial counts. So this is like real science. It is. Simulating the real world, these three pizzas have been cooked, cut, and are cooling. One is going to go in the refrigerator and serve as the control. The other two will be handled just like normal pizza. In the experiment, ordinary handling is important because that's the most common source of contamination. When people touch the pizza to pull off a slice, they also leave the bacteria on their hands behind. After handling, one pizza was refrigerated within two hours as recommended and the last pizza was left out. To quickly recap, pizza A went directly into the refrigerator without handling. Pizza B was refrigerated after it was handled, and pizza C was not refrigerated after it was handled. Neither one of us knows what this is gonna show. We don't know. Yep, and I'm excited to see those results too. To check the pizza for microbes, samples have to be cultured, which is labor intensive. 25 grams of pizza is placed in a sterile bag where some buffer is added. That is all placed into a stomacher. The stomacher essentially churns it and chews it up. That makes this. This is what ultimately gets cultured. Cultures were taken from all three pizzas at 6, 12, and 24 hours. Then we waited. I'm back two days later at our food microbiology lab to get the results of the pizza study. And I've got to tell you, I'm really excited. Let's start at six hours. Pizza A, the control pizza that was cooked, remained untouched, and was refrigerated. For that pizza, we had the lowest amount of microbes, so we detected about 30 cells per gram of pizza. So it's a very low level. You could consider that to be almost sterile. Pizza B, the pizza that was handled normally but refrigerated, we found 140 cells per gram of pizza. So about 10 times more microbes than we saw on our control pizza, but still a very low level. But it's pizza C that we're the most interested in. This was handled normally and it wasn't refrigerated, something many of us are guilty of. We found about 2,600 cells per gram of pizza. So again, another order of magnitude higher than the pizza that was handled and refrigerated, but still overall, fairly low level of microbes were present on that pizza. I know 2,600 microbes per gram might sound like a lot, so Dr. Bergholtz put that into some perspective. Things like fresh produce and fresh fruits can have anywhere from 1,000 to maybe 10,000 cells per gram on them. So what we see here is that even if we had it sit out for six hours, that still seems to be relatively low risk. Also important, the testing for the more concerning bacteria, Staph aureus, sometimes found on skin, was all negative. But what about the cultures from 12 and 24 hours? We saw that there were a significant number of molds kind of taking over. However, finding yeast and mold in your food is really not harmful. We know that there are mold spores circulating in the air. That was probably the most likely source of contamination that we saw on our pizza because we just left it out on the countertop. So I'd say based on these results, uh, consuming pizza that we've left out for more than two hours is probably fairly low risk.
Now, the bacteria that did grow was actually mm -hmm. consistent with what you would find on most people's hands. So the greatest source of contamination was, in fact, when other people touched slices right. when they were getting their pizza. Now, it's also important to note that these results really only apply to pepperoni and cheese pizza. And while this was scientific, I have to like give the disclaimer, it was not exhaustive. <laughs> so if you have any doubt, throw it out. But, but the important the distinction you're making is pepperoni is cured. Exactly. So it doesn't spoil exactly. the way and that I other have things to say, might. Yes. Um, you know, I, this is pizza that has been sitting out. It's from 11 o'clock this morning. It's been sitting out in my office basically since 11 o'clock so at it's noon. Six and hours. And you're going to eat it. I am still prepared to eat it. Oh, I think this I is perfectly reasonable. That. The question is whether you guys are interested in eating. Well, it. I'm I would in. Say no, and you I'm would. In. No, no, it's, no it's, but I don't want to touch the other slices, right? right? See, Isn't that the key? That one. But that's really the yes. key: is that you don't touch the other slices because that's really where the contamination occurs. Right. Huh. Okay, so what if you like microwave it and warm it up, which I think is also disgusting to do. With yeah, pizza, don't but do let's that just with say pizza. you're going to do yeah. it. Does that like keep it? So, I don't know, does that help? Well, that's an important point. I probably shouldn't have eaten this right before mm -hmm. I answered mm -hmm. that question. <laughs> While we did not study that specifically, based on some general food safety principles, mm -hmm. the answer is yes and no. If you reheat it long enough that it reaches a Excuse me. I love how I'm interviewing yeah, you. Wait until he state. got his mouth full. If it reaches a kill temperature, okay. it will actually eliminate some of the microbes on the pizza. But the problem is if you don't kill everything and if you don't eat it after reheating it, you could actually make things worse by then leaving it at a temperature that now favors bacterial growth. So <clears throat> here's the bottom line. If you do reheat it, mm -hmm. you have to eat it. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or how about do just not eat it when it's hot, when you're done? Store. Refrigerate it. Yeah, but it see then sense. people, yeah. right, well, most people, people don't do that, that and then they throw it out and they waste what I would right. call perfectly good pizza. And our rule in our house, you touch it, you take it. Oh, and that's very fair. Touch it, you take it. And everything it, it, I know it. about Kim Adams, <laughs> you know the years I'm I've known you, <laughs> you are not touching one no. piece of this. Nope. Sorry. Okay. Well, but the good thing in my house, it never lasts long enough no. to, to, well, that's to, better to put away. Anyway, you're lucky if you get a slice.